Hello and welcome to my video tutorial. I'm here to teach you how to fly a plane. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to pass my PPL, my private pilot license exam in two days. And a very good way to learn things is to teach them. So first video, we're going to go on to the um, first uh, six main ins uh, instruments and then we'll move on uh, just quickly go through the less important ones. Now there are six main instruments. Um, I'm going to begin with the um, just with them uh, and we're going to work on a co looking at a cockpit of a HR200. Now I fly in France so these are quite common here. Um, you can, but it's pretty much the same layout as a Cessna 152. I mean, there's a couple of extra instruments, but nowadays um, you don't use them. There's the ADF and extra, and you don't use the ADF. Um, okay, so let's begin. Uh, the first instrument I want to talk about is the airspeed indicator. Now that's a top left instrument. As you can see, there's although well, it looks like it's just three colors from there, uh, it's actually uh, yeah three colors. But the green arc goes from the beginning of the of the white up to the beginning of the left of the yellow and the green arc is the airspeed you really want to keep to I mean yellow the yellow part is airspeeds which are a bit too high for the airplane and uh, doing maneuvers which are a bit too sudden might be dangerous there's in some planes a red arc which is airspeeds never to exceed never to go to the white arc is simply the airspeeds where you can deploy your flaps you don't want to rip your flaps in mid-flight, that would be just a disaster. Okay, um, the next instrument is the um, artificial horizon. There you go. Uh, the orange lines represent the wings, the orange dot represents the nose. At the very top you see two little orange things and they are just um, showing uh, your bank. As you can see there's white markings on the side. Uh, the first one's 10 degrees, the second 20, the third 30, uh, the fourth uh, 60, and the fourth 90, or the fifth 90. It should never go to 90, and very rarely go to 60. Usually go to about 45, which is halfway between 30 and 60. Now, the little dot in the middle will go up whenever you pull back, uh, because it's representing the nose of the plane. So when you pull on the yoke, the nose of the plane will go up, and thus so will the uh, orange dot. And the wings on the artificial horizon will bank when you bank. So it's very useful when you've got very bad visibility. The next instrument, let's go to the altimeter. The altimeter uh, is just simply an instrument that shows your altitude. Now you can set it to the QFU, QF, um, e, sorry, which represents the, um, the, uh, simply the height above the ground. Now I never use this, and in France we don't use it a lot. We use what's called the QNH. That is the um, we, uh, that is usually the altitude above sea level, and how it works really is that you enter using the knob on the bottom left, uh, pressure, air pressure, and the QNH really is the air pressure at sea level on that day on that hour. Now the reason I don't like using the other one, which is uh, height above the ground, is because as you as you fly, the terrain changes a lot, so your height above the ground does vary. So I mean the so the thick needle is is in the thousands. The thin one is in the hundreds. So it's a very simple and basic instrument to use. Uh, now let's talk about the vertical speed indicator, which is right underneath the altimeter, and that is also known as a VSI. Now the vertical speed indicator just does exactly that. It indicates how fast you're gaining or losing height. Now the problem with that is uh, the vertical speed indicator works uh, using g-force, so you find a re uh, retarded bit of effect. So really, it's better to trust your altimeter when you're wanting to know direct results. But uh, if you're trying to do an approach or um, taking off or making sure that you're flight le uh, leveling flight, this is very useful. As you can see, as the needle goes up, that means you're gaining altitude. As the needle goes down, you're losing altitude. And the weird thing about this one is that it starts sideways. Uh, the next is the gyroscope. Now the gyroscope pretty much is um, an easy way to see your bearings. For example, when you bank, you turn to the right bearing. I mean, you can see there's a, there's a compass on the top of the dashboard there. 
but uh, it's very hard to use it because it's reversed. So when you turn left, the compass will spin to the right, and vice versa. Uh, what the gyro what the gyroscope does is it shows you your real bearing using a fuel pump. Problem is, it drifts every now and then. So I I check it about every five minutes. I mean, the book says about every 10 minutes, but it's always better to be safe, especially in navigation. Uh, finally, uh, what I consider the sixth most important instrument is the RPM indicator, or the tachymeter. Now, I find it important because it can help you detect anomalies. It's pretty much what it is. It's just the um, revolutions uh, per minute of the engine made on the, on the, um, on the propellers. And the reason why I find it so useful is just because um, I have a cousin who went flying with a friend of his who's a pilot, and that was quite recent. And um, the pilot noticed there was a problem with the tachymeter, so he just uh, called the uh, ATC and began talking to them. And it was only then the noises began, and the tachymeter started shooting down way too fast. And if he hadn't uh, kept an eye on the tachymeter, he might have had to do an off. Uh, off airport landing, landing on a field. So I mean, it might save you from difficult situations. It give you time to pre prepare yourself for an emergency. Well, that's the six instruments, um, the main ones. And uh, I'll be showing you how to use them properly and when to use them. But really, I'd scan them every single second. Uh, okay. The next instrument is the VOR. Now that's not really important. Uh, for people who just want to fly simply. I mean, this uh, video tutorial simply is very useful if you want to fly a flight simulator, for example. But if you're just learning how to control a plane, you don't need it. What a VOR does is uh, help you navigate. We'll talk about this on another video. Uh, on the bottom left, there, right underneath the airspeed indicator, is what I call the magic ball. I call it a magic ball simply because what it is is a, a mercury drop in a, in a liquid and what it indicates is the drift the plane is going through so if it's not flying rectilinearly which means in the direction in which it's pointing the little ball here will drift to the left or right according to where you're doing and all you have to do to correct this is press the rudder in the direction the ball goes um, the more you press, uh, the more the ball, the ball moves, the more you press. And that will induce a turn, but we'll talk about this later. Well, um, another instrument that you'd know to want to use is the NAVCOM communication. And as you can see on the right, uh, there's two screens, one's for the VOR. That's the one on the right. What you care about is the one on the left. That is the one you use to change frequencies to talk to the ATC. Uh, underneath it is the transponder. Now, 7000 usually is the frequency of the transponder you leave uh, when, you, when you're not told to change. So, I mean, uh, I'm running out of time, but pretty much the essentials are there. You, that's all you need to learn how to fly or to control, to control a plane, pretty much. Um, next video... I'll be talking about takeoff, uh, landing, banking, going up and down, which are the basics and just a bit of the controls, the yoke and the throttle, etc. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. If you wanna uh, follow me, just go ahead. Um, I'll be flying in Scotland next, so I probably won't get any video footage then. But uh, yeah, enjoy. Thank you very much. Please comment.